Renegade is to grow sugar cane. That's what we're really interested in. The primary raw ingredient, which of course is influenced by where it grows. Sugar cane grown on different farms, different soil types and different microclimates will influence uh, how that cane grows and the flavours that we can then obtain once we ferment it and distill it. So our farming principle is to uh, grow sugarcane on as many different variables as possible so that we can build up a library of component um, spirits that are truly derived from uh, Grenada and Grenada's soils. See the, the fertilizer is doing its job? Yep. The origin of this project goes back to about 2015, 2016. And one of the first things we had to do was find suitable varieties, or what we believed would be suitable varieties of sugarcane to grow here. In the Caribbean, there is the West Indies Sugarcane Breeding Center. And there they breed sugarcane varieties and the progeny of those varieties, of those crosses that they make, is then selected within the various different environments around the Caribbean. So this was the obvious place to start. We made an agreement with them for the supply of eight distinct varieties of cane, which would be suitable for the purposes of the project, which is specifically for rum agricole. Now the whole idea of it is that you, you have a spread of varieties. You don't know what's going to work until you're actually there in the environment. And we found that of those eight, two didn't make it. Six remained. And so those six were, were planted on a commercial scale here in Grenada, so that they were used to the environment, and then they were planted out. In terms of mechanization, we have a fleet of six tractors. They're all quite sophisticated machines. They require a lot of skill to keep them going. And that is one of the challenges with mechanization. We do intend to increase the level of mechanisation as we go, uh, particularly for the most labour-intensive tasks. So this year we will see the introduction of semi-mechanised planting. So it's a method of planting behind a tractor as opposed to uh, pulling all the cane into the field by hand, putting it in the ground by hand and covering it up by hand. Um, harvesting is done manually. Uh, we employ up to 55 cutters and each man cuts around about a tonne per day. And we cut the cane to the requirement of the mill. It's very important that we don't cut more or less than what's required each day, so that that cane is delivered to the mill in the same day. And that maintains the freshness, and that maintains the quality that we need to go right the way through the system to produce the rum. When the cane arrives at the distillery, the first thing is it's weighed on, on a weigh bridge this is the Weybridge system. It's basically to track and trace and to take the weight of the cane. I then put in all the information in, the farm variety type, the field it came from. I put it on the system, give the signal for the trailer to leave. It would leave, then go dump it off. And my role is done. It looks simple, but it's a very complicated piece of machinery in that it all needs to be synchronized so that it works uh, in relation with each other. The, the torque, the pressure, the conveyors, uh, the variable speed, so that it always optimizes that milling of the, of the cane. And ultimately, the bagasse, what's left over, has to be dry enough to go into the biomass boiler. So our work schedule here is um, basically on a shift basis. When the plant is in operation, we work 24-7 on three shifts. We have a state-of-the-art equipment, of course, um, from milling right down to, to casking. All the plant is automated, so it means that every control station, the distillery control, the process control, the mill control, 
and the boiler control. They could see the entire plant at the time in terms of the temperatures during whatever distillation, the, the rate at which the mill is running, the rate at which the distillate is coming out. I could look at the wastewater treatment plant and see all the pHs and those sort of things. So in terms of that, that um, automated control process, we, we could boost of that. When the cane comes to the factory and it is milled, each farm is milled separately. Each field within each farm is milled and fermented separately. Because we believe that rum is made in fermentation, so we pay particular attention to our fermentation. Everybody wants to see the stills because that's you know, the great iconic imagery of, of stills. Everybody wants to look at that. You know, the, the mechanics, the copper, the stills. But actually, that's not where the flavor's made. That sort of, sort of fixes the weight of the spirit, yeah, sure. Um, but the flavor is actually liberated during fermentation. What we've done here is something uh, rather unique. Normally, a, a fermenter is vertical like this, a little bit of headspace and a lot of liquid. So the yeast activity here bubbles up into quite an aggressive action. What we've done, on the other hand, is we've done that. We've turned it horizontal. So we've got much more headspace and a lot shallower depth. So the, the gas is, is more evenly distributed. It's a much calmer fermentation. Right now, we're at the still house where our rum is distilled and collected. This is our main pot. Retort 1, which collects our low wines, and Retort 2, which has high wines, for our distillation. The rum is distilled in the pot and sent to our safe, then collected in our spirits tank. This is the safe where the alcohol passes to collect our readings so that we ensure that we're making the perfect spirits. As a distillery, we have essentially two waste streams, emissions from producing steam, and the other is wastewater and vinas. At Renegade Rome, we boast of a state-of-the-art wastewater treatment plant. So when that vinas comes out, we screen out all the solids. The liquid will go over into our stabilization tank. We balance the pH, stabilize the temperatures. It is free of solids now and then it goes down to what we call an infiltration trench where we have down at the back. When that effluent leaves, it go to the trench. It is practically clean and we even use it as irrigation for the cane. Like are you reaching fertilizers? And we look all phytoremediation. It comes from the whole phytome in the plants remediating the soil. So when that goes into the trench, the roots of that plant will take up that nutrients and so, and that clean water when it filters into the soil, and it goes through our mangrove system. But we're pretty comfortable that what goes there is pure, clean fish food, high in nutrients. So you find, you find a lot of fish and animal feed in there. It's quite an elaborate process, but it's important. It's important, and this is part of how we designed the distillery. We designed it and positioned it here precisely for that purpose, that we were able to use nature this way. Another aspect of our environmental management program is we generate a lot of bagas, of course, from milling. That bagas is used as fuel for the biomass boiler, and we burn that in a furnace and convert that into steam, which we use in the plant to generate electricity, so we get rid of the bagas. In terms of waste, all the waste that we use at the plant is practically recycled and used back in the agricultural process. The warehouse is where the casks are stored. Th th these are our crown jewels. You smell that. <laughs> I love the smell in here. So this is where we fill the barrels and store them. You'll see here the stacks of American oak barrels, French oak barrels here from Bordeaux. Really top quality barrels. The wood is, is, is much thicker than American barrels so we get more impact. So we want to use a, a mix of both, you know, the standard American and French oak. So for us, warehousing is very important um, because those flavor compounds that we extracted uh, during fermentation, the ones that were fixed 
you know, and the weight fixed during distillation. Here, they are influenced not only by the wood and the quality of the wood, but also this marine air around us on the Atlantic shore. These barrels are not just containers, they allow air to microscopically, day by day, hour by hour, change those flavor compounds into the ones we associate with maturity. That's why we do this. Each one is barcoded, each barrel is traceable back to the field, the terroir, the farm from which that sugarcane originated. And of course, part of the Renegade uh, policy is we want to share that with people so they can see that what we're talking about, we can stand by and we can prove. And we think that's very important that the consumer can understand the adventure, the Renegade adventure that we're on and see for themselves the discoveries that we're making. And that's, of course, the nature of our project is to seek out these flavour differences attributable to the soils and the microclimates of Grenada. Fix them in distillation, put them into barrel, and then we can use these building blocks of flavour, of Grenadian flavour, to create the most profound, compelling rum um, there's ever been. You've got to try this, this is extraordinary. <laughs> That's the aim the most profound, most compelling rum there's ever been, the Renegade Rum.